Hey, how you doing? I hope you're well. Today I want to show you about something new called the Terraform Import Block. Well, it's around a year old. Many people haven't used it yet. I'm going to show you in this video how that works, but I will also show a reminder of how the original Terraform Import command works because it still has a, a you know particular use case. So here we are. Uh, I want to show you this here is the format of the import command. It's just Terraform Import. And what import is used for is let's say you go to a company and they have already existing infrastructure in the cloud then they started to use Terraform but the problem is a lot of their old infrastructure was done by hand point and click and you now want to bring this under Terraform management not only so you can see everything in one single pane everything in your infrastructure in your Terraform code but also so you can manage it make modifications in future etc and that's why this command was invented the Terraform import command and we're going to use this now I want to show you here what we have so first of all I want to show you what we have already set up that we're going to import I'm using the AWS CLI we have a bucket here called bucket sponsor skip future I'm actually going to copy that and just paste it here because we're going to need that later and apart from that the only thing I have in my directory, this is on my Ubuntu server with all my dev tools installed. I've got a file called provider.tf. So you're probably familiar with this if you used Terraform before. I've just got my details for my AWS provider and version numbers and region and stuff like that. Pretty simple stuff. That's all I've got in here, nothing else. I'm going to quit. So how does the Terraform import command work? Well, I'll show you here if I scroll down and then go to import then this is how it's used and there is an example in here for importing there's some switches but in general the way that it works is you would go terraform import the terraform resource type and then a name in this case example foo and then the ID of the resource out there in AWS that it needs to go and look up so in, that, in this case it's an instance ID, in our case it's a, it's a bucket. So we want to do Terraform import AWS S3 underscore bucket because I have the actual documentation for bucket open dot foo and then that. So let me, in fact if you go here to the documentation on every documentation page for every resource if you go right to the bottom, I'm going to press end there's always the import document and you can see here. So I'm going to need this command okay so let me copy that and paste that there I'm gonna lose that at the beginning Terraform import AWS S3 bucket dot bucket it could be anything it could be foo and then the bucket name so let's type in that bucket name which I call bucket sponsor skip future and I press that and it says it doesn't exist in the config so what we actually have to do is we actually, I'm going to create bucket.tf and I'm going to paste that in there. It, what this is here is, we don't need this, it's just a commented line. It's just an empty an empty resource. You can pre-fill this if you already know some of the attributes, but in a lot of cases you won't know anything, it'll just be empty. So AWS S3 bucket, bucket. So let's save this and clear the screen and we'll replay that command. AWS S3 bucket bucket so we know that exists already in our code and it's just empty you might have one or two in there if you want this is what it needs to look up let's do this there we go it prepared the import it's refreshing the state and it did the import it says that they're now in the state let's see what we got in here let's have a look at the state file and there you can see it imported it. It knew it was an S S3 bucket. That's the bucket name. But as you can see, it also imported other stuff, such as lifecycle rule, logging configuration, object lock, encryption, etc. So it's all in there. And you can now start, if you wanted to, you could start filling this info here, all those attributes. You could start putting them in here you know life cycle rule or, 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 or whatever it's called you could start doing that 
and adding what's important to you. You may not want to add everything. You may just want to add what you think could be changed in future. You can just leave it like that. If I go Terraform Plan, check this out, see what it says. So remember, it imported already, and it put it in the state file. And it says your infrastructure matches, and, and there's nothing to change. So even though it's blank, it doesn't matter. You can carry on like this, but probably what you want to do is whatever you think might be changed in the future, you want to put in here. Okay? But I'm just showing to demonstrate that that's it. It's actually important. You don't actually need to change the, the, the Terraform code. But it'd be pretty pointless bringing something under Terraform management if all you had, you know, if you didn't have anything except just the contents of your state file. So that's a classic way of doing Terraform import. Let me show you the new way. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove the state file. We're going to start again from the beginning. All we have is a blank resource here. Now what we have to do is I'm going to show you here. If we go up here, it says, learn more about import blocks, which are since Terraform v1.5 and later, which is last year. So, import blocks. Here's an example. It's very similar, but the only the difference is you have this import block first. So let me copy this example. In fact, we have an example here on the S3 documentation site. So I'm going to copy this, because it'll be less for me to change. And let's go to bucket.tf and I'll just add this at the top, just my preference. This can be in another file even. Let me just clean that up a bit. So we've got AWS S3 bucket dot bucket but we do need that bucket name and remember I copied and pasted that so let me copy that again and paste that in. So we've got an import block and it says to AWS S3 bucket dot bucket we want to import bucket with this ID. So to this, which is actually right here, right underneath, but it could have been in another file potentially. So it's very similar to before, the only difference is we've got an import block. So let's save this. Let's clear the screen. Let's do a Terraform plan. And I'm gonna create a plan file as well. We're gonna see what happens now. So, already the workflow is kind of different because we're using Terraform Plan. And the difference now is we actually get a plan file. So it says, this bucket will be imported and you get a chance to actually, this, is, this looks very similar to our state file. But this time, we haven't imported anything yet. This time we can get a chance to review the attributes to make sure that this is what we want to do. So you can see those attributes. And here's the plan, one to import. It saves the plan file and we need to run this to apply it. So let's do that because it all looks good to me. Terraform apply plan file. Okay, and it imported. So let's have a look at the state file. And lo and behold, it looks exactly the same as before because you know we've we've done the same import. So that's good. And if we look at that bucket.tf, well as you would expect none of the configuration got changed by running Terraform plan and apply. This is the same. So what's the difference by using the import block? Well there's two advantages. The first advantage is that we have that new workflow, Terraform plan, Terraform apply. This means that you can put this into CICD. You can automate this this workflow. And you couldn't do that before. It was just a one-off command Terraform import. So that's the one of the biggest advantages you can now put this in a CICD workflow. The second advantage is we have this import block. We can just leave this, right? Let me sh let me show you here. If I go Terraform plan, then you're going to see here that just like before, it's going to say there's nothing to change. So there is a pretty small benefit that we now there you go, nothing to change. There is this is left behind. Now you can get rid of this right now if you want to. You don't have to keep this. However, this is serving as a kind of historical reference that out of all my Terraform resources, some of them were actually imported. And we know that because we have this import block that serves as a historical documentation, a historical reference. And you don't have to have it in pairs. You can move all of these and put them in a separate file like imports.tf or whatever. So two big advantages. One, CI CD workflow. Two, 
Import blog is a historical reference. Now there's a third advantage which is also pretty cool. And for this for me to show you this, what I have to do is I actually have to remove the state file. We have to re-import this now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit that bucket.tf. I'm gonna leave this import block, but I'm actually gonna remove this resource block. We're, and here's a clue. We're not gonna need this, okay? So let me remove this. Just leave the import block. I'm gonna save this and there's a command here, if we go back to the documentation, there's a command here called ah, go to generate configuration and here it is, You go, when you run your Terraform plan you also run this flag, generate config out and you put equals to whatever file you want it to go to. So let's do that, I've copied that, let's clear the screen Let's do that. I am still going to use a plan file again, so out equals plan file. But you can see again, let me just remind you, generate config out equals the destination file that we want to use. So press enter. And what this is going to do is, this is going to go out to AWS. It's not only going to import the resource into the state file like it did before, but it's also going to take some of those values out of the state file and say, Hey, we're going to help you. We're going to we've generated a config for you. So let's look at it. Vim generated resources.tf, and you can see here it's put a comment that is generated by Terraform. It's just the same as before, but the big difference is that it's actually pre-filled some of the attributes that it was able to read. For example, bucket prefix, object lock enable tags. Now I've got to say it's a little bit disappointing because there aren't that many. There's only there's only five here. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? But I'm a bit surprised that in a whole year that the AWS provider hasn't been updated so that one of the most popular products, the, the buckets, the import for Terraform only imports five. It's really, it's not that great in my opinion. There's, there's a lot more that they can do. So, you know, chances are that you're probably not going to change these actually. There's other attributes that you might want to change. So, what are you going to have to do? You're still going to have to go to the state file. Oh, we haven't applied this. Let's, sorry, let's do the apply. So, Terraform apply plan file. Just to demonstrate. There you go. It used the generated block as config and you can see that it's perfectly valid to apply it. So for now I go to terraform.tf state of course it looks just like before. So what you're going to have to do going forward is probably what you want to do is add manually some of the things that you want. Okay. And it, it, it really depends on what your organizational priorities are, things that you think might change, or things that you want documented in your Terraform code for other people to to see for your entire development organization to be able to see. So it really, really depends. So yeah, there's some limitations. It's about a year old. It doesn't show all that much. You will still have to manually or automate a lookup in your Terraform state file or maybe use the AWS CLI to get the same kind of attributes and then modify your TF, your Terraform files to add those attributes, things that you think you may want to change in future. So that is Terraform import blocks. I hope you found this video useful. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.